Now that we've plotted our points, we can uh, decide whether any of them are, are anomalous, uh, meaning that they don't fit the pattern of data and we don't really trust them. Now here, um, we, we've got four points that look pretty much on a line. This one's a bit off, this one even a bit more so. And this one stands out because it's actually really out of the pattern, it's, it's got smaller. So I'd be tempted to say that's anomalous, but then I can't really be sure that it isn't this one that's higher. So I won't actually go as far as circling it and saying, well, I don't trust that. I'm just going to leave it as it is. If it was down here, then I would say it was anomalous and put a circle around it. Um, okay, now I'm going to do a line of best fit now. Um, in maths, they teach you that uh, a line of best fit is always straight, and they use a different term, a curve of best fit for, for a curved line. In science, we call them both lines, because they are. And uh, the only decision we have to make here, really, is do we have to go through 0, 0? And this really is about just thinking logically about this particular experiment. I'll just remind you of it. Here we are. Um, now, we haven't got a data point here with no mass. It might be that uh, we had to put the mass holder on at the start for some reason. I don't know. But the question is, if we imagine it without any mass hanging on the end of the spring, would its length be zero? And it wouldn't. It would be. It still have some length. So we don't have to go through zero, zero here. Um, and if we want to do a straight line, it would be easier in a way if I had a ruler that I could uh, a see-through ruler that I could put over the points. But what I'm aiming to do is get a line that's going basically as close as I can get it through most of the points. And I'm, I am going to basically ignore this one, I think. So perhaps I'll, I'll change my mind there and go back and call it an anomaly. And I can even move this around and just think, well, is it better going a bit higher? If you did it like this, with no points above it, but two or three points below, then that would, that would probably lose you marks. You want it to go through the middle of the points pretty much and I can extend it up to the line and that will tell me what length my spring would have had if I'd measured it without any uh, mass on it. So now I've basically as I said changed my mind and decided this point is anomalous I'm going to put a circle around it it's just about far enough away from the rest of the data that I'm going to ignore it and say that it was wrong and what I'd actually do is um, if I had the opportunity is go back and repeat that measurement and maybe repeat this one as well or, or even do some fill in ones either side. Uh, let me show you uh, an example of a, a different range of, of points and this one's a little bit uh, more complicated. It's a similar sort of spring situation but here it's starting to stretch faster as we put more mass on it. We say it's gone beyond its elastic limit and here I'm, I'm going to probably say that all the points should be on a curve. This one looks a little bit out of the pattern but not that bad. What we, what we need here is a, is a nice freehand line and I'll show you a little um, a piece of advice which is if you're right handed like me uh, for this one it's better to turn your picture upside down and this means that the natural way that my wrist kind of rotates will make it easier to draw a nice smooth curve that pretty much goes through all of those points and now if I rotate the paper back up the right way that's showing more or less what's happening with the data. It's a shame that I went underneath that one, and so I might rub that out and try again, but that's probably just about good enough. Okay, it's your turn to have a go at some more um, um, graph drawing of yourself. Here is some data, the same experiment. You'll need to pause the video in a few seconds if you don't want to see uh, the answers. So pause now. Okay, we're gonna move on and look at what you should have drawn. Here are the points. Did you remember the labels with units? They're very important. Half the marks for an isograph are for just getting your axes correct. One mark is for the points and the other is for the line. Now the line here is a little bit tricky because you've got to make a decision. Are we going to call this one anomalous or this one? Well, <coughs> I think really what you need to do here is go back and, and and repeat some of these measurements or or do some fill-in measurements but here it's looking like these three are all on a line and we could have a spring where uh, or, or some object that we're trying to stretch where it doesn't really budge for a while and what's actually happening is it's going along completely flat and then it starts to stretch and it goes up really fast and we would call this one anomalous again but remember you don't need to find an anomalous reading there might not be one Whoops. Done.